Good morning. Um, we just had our class and I mentioned that I was going to create a short video on um, how to use Excel to create some graphs. I did start and put some data into Excel and I'm going to kind of walk through some of the things. Um, please excuse me as I am not an Excel expert. Um, and so it might be a little clunky at times. So just bear with me. It's just going to hit the high points and some things and I'm going to kind of go through um, our bar chart and how to get some of those other pieces for like the frequency polygon and the ogive which are kind of those other bar chart e point graphs that all we ended the class with so I am going to share my screen um, I did create a to find it here, um, an Excel spreadsheet. And that's where I'm gonna kind of work. So I'm hoping that you guys can see this. Um, I did steal some of the information from our textbook. This is the one that was about the fines that were in class. So um, I have just put in the first couple classes and those are what I'm gonna work with. And so first of all, I did type in my frequencies. I do wanna show you some features of Excel that you may know, be familiar with if you are familiar with Excel, is we need to create our relative frequency. Um, we do need the total number that we have here. So what I'm gonna use is I'm just gonna kind of put um, the sum in here. So the total of these numbers, yes, when I did it in class, I did it by hand. Um, and I'm gonna change one of these numbers so we have a nice amount. I'm noticing it's not gonna be pretty. So I'm gonna change this to a five, okay? And the only reason I did that is because I want my numbers for this example to come out nice. Um, my sum button is up here on the top of the screen. So if you, you kind of hover over it, it does say sum and I'm going to sum, and it automatically grabs what you think you want it, what it, what it thinks you want. So it is grabbing the one through that four, which is what I want it to do. And then when I hit enter, I do see the 25. Okay, to create a relative frequency, again, that's like the percentage of each piece. Um, I want to basically take this one and divide it by the 25. So what I can do is in this screen, if I hit the equal button, that's telling Excel it is gonna do some math. And what I want it to do is I wanna take this number and I wanna divide by, so I'm gonna use the division, the slash button, and then I'm gonna grab that guy. And then if I hit enter, there's my 0 0.04. So I didn't have to do the math, Excel did the math. I'm also gonna go back up here because I wanna use this formula over and over and over again. Um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to scroll as I do this, I want this number to change, but I don't want that number to change. To force it to stay, you can add dollar signs in front of the column and in front of the number. So it's gonna freeze that cell. And what I can do is I can go back up here and I can grab this corner and I can pull it down and it should copy that formula all the way through. And you can kind of double check. So here it took B3, which is this B3, kind of like playing um, battleships, but it still left that B8 alone. Here I did the B4 divided by B8. So it is working the way I want it to. So there's my relative frequencies. I can cumulate, cumulate things too. I'm gonna first do the cumulative frequency here. I'm gonna, if I double click on this piece here, it kind of automatically fits the cell for me. So I'm going to start here. And I'm just going to go um, put the one. And then what I want it to do is I want this cell. So I'm going to take this cell to take this one. And then I'm going to add the one that's in that column. So it's taking the one above me and adding this piece. So 
So I added the zero. I'm going to take this formula and I do want it to slide all the way through. So I'm going to copy it all the way down. So here's my one plus the five to give me that six, the six plus the 10 to give me the 16, the 16 plus the five to give me the 21, the 21 plus the four to give me my total 25 by the time I get to the end. Okay. And again, I can do the same thing with the cumulative frequencies. Cumulative relative frequency. Probably spelt that wrong, but okay. Um, and if you wanted to copy, I could just say is equal to this one. And I can also take this formula and move it this way. So this is now taking, if you look at it, this E2 plus this one. And since I did slide over here, it's going to work for me. So I'm going to copy that down. And you notice we are adding up our relative frequencies. So our 0 0.04, we added nothing. We added our 0.2, we added our 0.4, we added our 0.2, and we added our 0.16. So there we go. Now to create graphs, um, and this is where I'm gonna use pretty much most of this material. If I wanna create just a bar graph, I'm gonna just highlight this information. I don't need the 25 and we can insert um, charts. They call them charts. I like to use graphs. Um, my favorite one is the bar graph here, or I could use this guy. There's a nice bar chart. Pick your favorite. There it is. Um, it does not have the labels on here. It does have my scales. It does not have my bars touching. Um, those you just kind of need to play with it. I'm just going to leave that to you to play with so that you can get your bars to touch. And you need to add some labels and so forth so we can go up into our formatting, our chart designs, and all of that so you guys can play with things. You can change colors in here. Um, if you don't like the blue, you can switch things around. So chart styles, you can kind of look at that. You can change your axes. You can add titles. See, I just hovered so I'm just in this plus button. Um, these are the defaults, but you could have axes titles, and then you can go right into those squares and change them. You can talk, put your data labels on here. You can have a ta table on here. Um, you can do lots of stuff in there, legends and so forth. Um, you can get, trying to remember, but you guys, I'll let you guys play with that. Again, your frequency is probably not the best title, so you can change that as well. Okay, so there's your basic bar graph. Um, if I were doing some of the other ones, I need those, those are the dots. So we're going to need those midpoints or we're going to need like the end of the last piece. Um, so what I might do is just create a column of my midpoints. So I'm gonna put the midpoints in here. And I might actually just have the, the computer do that. So my midpoint, well, if you remember, we need the midpoint of the previous column because that's going to start at zero. And we also need the midpoint of the of the class that would be after. So I need the class that would be before this. So that would be 25 to 49.9, but I just need the 25. So I'm going to take the 25. I'm going to add my 50. Whoops, and I better put parentheses around this. Otherwise, it's just going to divide the 50 by 2 and divide that by 2. There's my midpoint of the class that would be before it. Then I'm going to do the same thing again, the 50, whoops, parenthesis, 50 plus my 75 divided by 2. And there is going to be a pattern between these two. Um, so it's kind of jumping by 25. If I highlight that pattern, it's going to create, continue that pattern all the way through. No, it's not going to do that right for me. Sorry, I screwed that up. We'll try again. It did not. It used to. 
Um, so we're going to take our 75, and if you want to do it by hand, our 175 divided by 2, because I can add those. And each time we're adding 25, so if you wanted to think 87 plus 25 or find your midpoint, um, I'm going to get rid of these. Oops. You can continue that down. I'm just going to do a few. I'm going to put the zero because we wanted it to start at zero. Here we're going to, I'm just going to do my um, frequencies because this would be for my polygon and my zero. And the next one would have been a five. I probably should have done that one. I need the midpoint between that. equals 225 divided by 2. Okay, so then I'm just going to grab these few. And the best way to do a line chart is not the line chart. Um, it's to use actually the scatter plot. And we do want them connected. So there we go. And you can change your scaling here. You can change... Um, the other pieces, you remember those when I finish it, it does have to come back down to zero. And this is also how I would do my ogive, which is that cumulative piece. I would find, make a column of those end marks. So that 49, 99, 74, 99, 99, 99, 129, and then my cumulative pieces, either the frequencies or the relative frequencies, and then I would dot those as well. Um, again, this is video is just very short, very quick. Um, I didn't want to overwhelm you with a lot of detail. Again, I'm not going to ask that you do these by using Excel or a spreadsheet or some other software. You can create the graphs I ask for by hand if that is what you feel most comfortable with. But if you want to learn and play a little bit with Excel, um, this will at least get you started. So I am going to stop sharing um, and I'm going to stop this video shortly. So I hope that this video helped a little bit um, as far as graphing using some Excel.